Hey guys, welcome back. It's David here. So it's about a month into school here at Wharton, and it's definitely as busy, if not more busy, than what people have warned me about being an MBA student. On the academics front, I found that it's not really hard work, there's just so much work. Like one class might have like 80 pages of readings a week and like two cases, and you're taking like five or six of these classes at the same time. So it gets pretty insane pretty quick. I've just pretty much given up on trying to read everything and just read the bare minimum, just to skate by, going for completion rather than perfection. On the social side, it's still happening. There's definitely massive parties, but there's also small group dinners and one-to-one -one coffee chats. I actually prefer the smaller gatherings because you just get to build deeper relationships and have deeper conversations to get to know the other person. On the clubs front, even though no clubs have actually really started with any events, there was still a decent amount of work just to figure out what each club does and figure out which clubs I wanted to join. I ended up joining about 10 clubs, so we'll see how that takes off later in the semester. If you haven't watched my MBA admittance package unboxing video, then go check it out right now. But if you have, you know that I got admitted to Chicago Booth, MIT Sloan, and Wharton. So I wanted to share some of my tips and tricks, as well as things that worked for me to get admitted to some of these top MBA programs. So the purpose of this video is for me to share that I'll be starting a series of videos that cover each stage of the MBA application process. Stay tuned to the end of this video where I'll share my profile and my stats so that you have context for the rest of this MBA series. But before we get started, smash that like button and hit that subscribe button so that you know exactly when my videos are released. These videos will not be a how to get into X school type of video. I'm not going to be providing you with a magic formula that's going to get you admitted. The purpose of these videos is really just to show you one way of how I got into these schools, just so that you have an example. As I was going through the MBA application process, I found a lot of information, but they were very theoretical, like you should do this or you should do that. But I never found any true examples of what people have done. So through these videos, I hope to show you exactly what I did. The first video I plan on publishing this weekend will be targeted to you round one applicants who will be receiving your interview invites either this week or in the coming weeks. I will share with you the complete list of interview questions that I used to prepare for my interviews. As well, I will talk about how I used those questions to create responses that align with my application profile. Moreover, I'll talk about the differences between each of the interviews at each of those schools and the questions that they actually asked me during those interviews. Hopefully this will give you a better idea of what to expect during your interview so that you can ace it and get that admin. Next, I plan on publishing a video for you round two applicants who are still writing your essays. This video will talk about everything about the essays, going over the common essay questions as well as the types of responses that you can have for each of those essays. I'll share some of my essays with you so that you will have an example of what is an essay that actually worked. I will also spend a bit of time going over what I call the post-interview essays. These are essays that you get after you receive an interview invite or after you actually do your interview. I found that there was very little information about these essays just because there's so few candidates that get to them. And hopefully this will help you tackle those essays once you get the interview invite later this year or into next year. So finally, I'll share with you my profile. First of all, I did not cure cancer or build a school in Africa. In fact, I don't even have that much international experience. Since immigrating to Canada at the age of seven, I've pretty much stayed in Canada for the past 20 years. For undergrad, I did a double degree program where I got a Bachelor of Mathematics from the University of Waterloo and a Bachelor's of Business Administration from Wilfrid Laurier University. After that, I joined the Brattle Group, which is an economic consulting firm. For those of you who don't know what economic consulting is, I like to describe it as doing math for lawyers. All of our cases have some type of litigation behind it, and I started off working in pharmaceutical patent infringement. As an example, a case that I worked on was to help a generic pharmaceutical company seek damages from a branded company. 
So what that means is when you see a headline like Apple sues Samsung for $500 million, we're the ones that help quantify that $500 million. After that, I shifted gears a little and did a few random cases before going into securities class action lawsuits. So an interesting case that I did was I actually got to put somebody in jail for stealing millions of dollars from two hedge funds. Now back to my profile. When I applied, I was 26 years old and I had a Canadian citizenship. So I was Chinese Canadian. My parents are actually very middle class. Back in China, they both got bachelor's degrees in electrical engineering, and they now both work at a bank in the IT side. In terms of extracurriculars that I did while I was working, I joined a volunteer pro bono consulting firm that provided consulting services to nonprofits across Toronto. In addition to that, because economic consulting is so academic, I actually had the opportunity to guest lecture with some of the partners and associates at Brattle at local universities like the University of Toronto and Ryerson University. Above that, I think the only additional credential I'll mention is that I do have a CFA charter. Now for the hard numbers. My undergraduate GPA is 88% and the schools actually asked me to submit it in native format so I didn't have to convert it to the 4.0 GPA scale. My GMAT is 740. This is a 97th percentile score, and luckily I was actually able to get it just by taking it once. The breakdown of my GMAT is that I got a 39 on the verbal side, which is an 89th percentile score, and through some sheer luck, I managed to get a perfect score on the quant side with a 51, which is a 96th percentile score. In the subsequent videos, I'll talk about how I use that 51 to really craft my profile around that um, and really leverage that score. In writing, I got a five out of six, which I believe is something like a 54th percentile score. And in integrated reasoning, I got an eight out of eight, which is a 96th percentile score. So hopefully that gives you a brief overview of my profile and stats, but I will delve deeper into each of these components in the relevant videos. So definitely subscribe once again to make sure that you know exactly when those videos are published. See you soon.